Holland Tishi has compiled charts to show the decline of the overall print media, um, which I want to discuss with you today. However, this is a long format video in which I want to speak about the entire print media in Germany and um, how they are connected. So I'm using this opportunity to give you an overview over what is going on, who is connected to whom, who owns whom. Uh, the second half of this video will be about uh, what I consider a cold coup d'etat, uh, the editorial rooms that have been changed in the years of 2014 and 2016, um, in the time when mass immigration uh, sped up. Uh, but not just mass immigration, that's just one important issue. For me, the deeper issue is really that our democracy was abolished. And uh, this happened by and large in the newsrooms first. I can only give a small glimpse into all of this because um, there are thousands and thousands of newsrooms apparently in this country. And I can only cover something that I see, so I will go by uh, examples, um, or at least I will um, just go into one in, in detail so that you can have an idea what I mean with um, a cold coup d'etat. Um, so why are print media important? Why do I discuss them in the first place? After all, more people seem to be reached by Hollywood. Um, all these left-wing talking points are uh, pushed down our throats by Meryl Streep already. So why would I bother with talking about your magazines that you can ignore, right? And the reason is that this is the place where your average citizen gets information, political information, and believes that this is an in-depth um, look into the matter already, when in reality, of course, it's not. They are just um, mouth-fed some pieces of information that are conducive for the interests of the elites. And uh, these print media appear on crucial uh, places where your not-so-interested person picks up something to get a bit more informed. And this is um, in public reading rooms, like in your library. Uh, but that's also not where you actually see your average citizen to, to strand and then to pick up something random. Uh, more important is uh, planes, and you will see in statistics that they that they actually count those um, separately. Uh, the, the copies that you find in planes are counted separately because they have a, a huge impact. This is the clean teal our elite is interested in, people who are not terribly informed, but who want to be up uh, to date and pick up something occasionally. So they are those who are smart in, in their uh, respect, um, usually are good in the things they do professionally, uh, but are not well versed in everything that's going on. And when they take the flight, uh, they uh, get a bit of information and then take the, the sides of the elites in any given discussion. So these are crucial copies. And then there is something um, like a, a, a reading club um, system that uh, is in decline, as I would say. Um, I don't know how, if it ever was as strong in America or the UK. I didn't really pay attention in the past to it. Um, but we had um, very reliable um, reading clubs in Germany until very recently, and they were called Lese Circle. Um, that the verb between translation would be reading circles, and these were um, probably discounted. I'm not sure, but they were probably discounted papers um, who were wrapped into uh, some um, hull. And on this uh, on this hull, they uh, placed some ad advertisement, um, and they had an, a contract with all these publishers to either send back the leftover copies, or they had to destroy those copies that uh, were um, taken back uh, after a period of time. So um, this this. Uh, copies, these uh, reading circles, uh, they appeared in all major, uh, not, not just major, that's why they are so successful, they appeared basically in every uh, um, doctor's uh, waiting room, in uh, hospitals, in um, train stations, and so on and so on. Wherever you wait, in a cafe or, or, so, or so, and you're just um, are busy with something else, or you're waiting for somebody, that's the place, um, you will find some some of these 
free copies that you cannot take with you, but they are free for you to read. And these uh, laser circle uh, reading clubs were um, um, prevalent all across the country until fairly recently. I think now with uh, Wi-Fi, uh, they have um, they are slowly disappearing, but still today they are relevant. And this is the clientele that is important. And this is why I'm talking about the print media today. Outside of that, these uh, uh, print media editorial boards are key word givers to the more important broadcasting uh, stations. Um, that's basically the same way how CNN works in in America. They have a very small uh, viewership, uh, the airport waiting uh, um, um, TV channel. They uh, are important because what what they say is picked up by ABC, is picked up by all these major news channels uh, sooner or later. Their talking points, their ideas, their takes on what's going on and how to make things look good for a certain group and look bad for another group. Uh, that is very influential. CNN does not want to be seen by you. CNN wants to be seen by many, 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 many newsrooms all across the country and inspire them. That's the uh, the reason for CNN and that's the strategical equivalent of the print media in Germany. So that's why I'm going through with you um, um, in this uh, detail. So uh, the information, Mr. Um, uh, Tishi is basing his crafts on comes from uh, an organization um, that uh, has the clumsy name Informationsgesellschaft zur Feststellung der Verbreitung von Werbeträgern EV and uh, that's termed for uh, Information Society to assess the proliferation of advertisement carriers. A clumsy name, but uh, the, its intention originally was to just figure out what publication gets bought, how often, so that uh, people who want to um, um, buy ads know um, how far their reach will be when they do so. With you through the the uh, daily papers first because they are apparently uh, most uh, up to date, most influential. Will have the fastest take on uh, on current events and will therefore inform the wider public uh, as to how th how to see the world. Uh, the most um, the most uh, widely uh, received uh, paper is a tabloid actually. Uh, that's uh, the famous Bild. Uh, you may have heard about it because it's the largest tabloid and not just the largest tabloid, but the largest daily uh, publication in Europe. So Bild belongs to the publisher Axel Springer that also owns Welt, uh, the American Business Insider, so take care, and um, the Polish tabloid Fakt. Um, they used to be a bit more conservative actually so much so that uh, they were bombed by the communist group Red Army Faction RAF in 1972. Uh, 33 workers were injured back then. Uh, by now they uh, would not do that anymore. They basically run this uh, lot anyway. Um, but uh, back then uh, they used to be the more conservative leaning news outlet in Germany. They were never of course as far to the right as Maggie Thatcher was uh, or ben Benjamin Netanyahu or Ronald Reagan. Uh, but they were kind of um, more conservative than they are today. Today they are indistinguishable from all the others. And this is swiftly followed by the Süddeutsche Zeitung. They are in a less steep decline and you will find this pattern again and again that conservative papers or papers that used to be conservative are in a steeper decline than uh, left-wing papers uh, because obviously they are betraying their own readership and people are just tiring. They have hardly any alternative to go to. Um, they hang on to find some pieces of bits here and there about uh, issues that uh, are of interest to them. Uh, but when they can, they actually um, just go somewhere else, do something differently. Um, but they own the Südthüringer Zeitung, the Stuttgarter Nachrichten and the Stuttgarter Zeitung. Uh, what's more interesting are the affiliate companies Neue Presse, Frankenpost, Freies Wort and Schwarzwälder Bote because they are owned 
by the Social Democrats. And uh, I have mentioned that in a number of videos before, um, the Social Democrats own a hell load of newspapers. And uh, they don't call themselves uh, Social Democrats then when they are in the balance sheets. Uh, there they appear under the name uh, Deutsche Druck und Verlagsgesellschaft. Uh, that uh, translates to German Print and Publishing Society. Um, that is just a proxy. Um, they are 100% owned legally um, by the Social Democratic Party SPD. Uh, they are the largest shareholder of Matzak, that is in itself one of the largest newspaper or publishers, newspaper publishers in Germany. And this is done through a number of many, many um, different regional newspapers that do not look like they belong to each other. Um, they have different logos, different um, writing um, stuff and so on, but they are all owned by Matzak. And that is partially held or has as largest uh, shareholder the Social Democrats. Um, according to uh, Wikipedia, they are the fourth largest uh, publisher in Germany. I mean, Matzak alone, the uh, Deutsche Druck and Verlagsgesellschaft uh, through their direct holdings is also supposed to be the 11th um, uh, most. Um, successful publisher or most widely read publisher in Germany. However, um, they make quite some fuss over uh, these mentions in other publications. So um, I have to clarify. Uh, Wikipedia source is not updated. The link is dead. Uh, it, it, it leads to a different place than they claim it does in the sources. Um, so um, it, um, they, I have no evidence that they own that they that Matzak, for example, is the fourth uh, most read um, publisher news publisher in Germany. However, still they are one of the most read. That that is something we can say for sure. There was uh, an article by Roland Tischi earlier this year. Um, that spoke about the uh, Social Democrat uh, media holdings in more detail and uh, the party threatened to sue him and he took it down for legal reasons, not because he was afraid that something was wrong. He explicitly said uh, that everything in his article is actually correct. He's just taking it down because um, he does not want to be sued and want to put money into this. His blog uh, lives on donations and his donors are your average citizen who cannot afford uh, long legal battles with a dumbass party that uh, just wants to smother information, uh, the proliferation of information. That's uh, insane. So he cannot afford this and he has decided to put it down. Of course, technically, that is or it is archived anyway. I will link it below, uh, so you can um, through Google Translate or Bing Translate or whatever translation tool you choose uh, can look into the holdings of Matzak in detail if you choose to. It's not terribly interesting. I'm just mentioning this uh, so that you know the Social Democrats don't want you to speak about this. Culture also is in a so-called research compound with two uh, subdivisions of the public broadcasting agency ARD. Um, that is for once NDR, uh, the northern section, and uh, WDR, the western section. Uh, I have translated um, this name as a research compound. It is a clumsy uh, translation, obviously, but that is because they have chosen a word that is hard to translate, and I believe that is by design. Um, um, what I just translate as compound is um, a word that just means any connection or any, um, um, you know, something that has to do with some, something else. So, um, fine. So they have uh, called it Rechercheverband and it means, um, that they are working together all the time. Um, the information is constantly um, exchanged. We have uh, a lot of stories that are quoted as being first unearthed by this uh, research compound. Um, 
That also means that the Süddeutsche Zeitung um, does not have to rely on its readership because um, it's hard to say really who takes what costs in these research uh, endeavors. Um, it is basically a way to um, skew the entire competition in favor of a staunchly left-wing party. So um, the research compound makes uh, mandatory contribution go to a, a newspaper that masquerades as a free market independent newspaper. Um, then there is FATS um, that used to be a, a conservative newspaper and that is because it used to be a corporate newspaper. Now there is a larger um, cultural shift that I should make a video about maybe on its own. Um, but uh, corporists have stopped being conservative uh, some time ago and that uh, has many reasons. I, I have explanations for this. One would be that um, many of these people are in the positions of power because they are well connected and their parents were very smart and very rich but they themselves are not and this shown through 2007 uh, seven, um, when Lehman Brothers and all their cronies uh, um, screwed up and finally people realized uh, that uh, they, these people are not terribly bright and they took the taxpayer money and sometimes even called it expropriation. In Germany we called it expropriation, Verstaatlichung um, of uh, the banks. So um, they kind of um, looked at the state as a way to get money in flux and to um, earn private, um, uh, private revenues um, without having to deal with the competition. There are different um, aspects of this. Um, you see also Google and Facebook uh, lobbying like mad because um, they also look at the state as a regulatory beast that just smothers competition. The times when corporatists, I mean the big fish, were for free market um, business, um, um, you know, startups and all this the this um ideas that our uh, our society was based on is over um competition is bad for them and these people that own fats they are a conglomerate of uh um high power um individuals corporatists um your traditional uh stock holding investor not the big uh billionaires but um uh, a group of people that have just made enough uh, money to be called somewhat rich but not enough to be you know pa uh, paying for entire publications on their own from uh, out of their pockets. Um, uh, the last two on the chart are Handelsblatt and Tagesspiegel. Uh, they are owned by Holzbrink and um, this is the format that I have already um, indicated um, uh, on my discussion about FATS and their holders. Uh, this is the kind of uh, ownership that runs on the billionaire le level. I was uh, pondering for quite some time where uh, Zeit, that also belongs to them, um, gets all the money from because they are way too closely to be supported by their readers. Um, I, there's just as much ad space as uh, one has and um, they, it didn't really make much sense why they are so closely have these expenses that they have uh, and are supposedly a free market enterprise. And the reason is they don't support themselves. They are owned by billionaires who have, um, you know, stocks in different uh, ent um, enterprises all across the economy. And uh, this is just their mouthpiece. This is uh, what they need to protect their other base business interests and their other political interests that is connected to help their cronies out. Uh, that's the kind of um, enterprise we are looking at here. Uh, so um, Handelsblatt and Tagesspiegel belong to um, the publisher Dieter von Holzbrank, GmbH. And I'm uh, emphasizing this because uh, there are actually two Holzbrank publishers that work in cohorts with each other, they openly admit that. Um, they even own, um, co-own co um, the weekly newspaper Zeit. It is not on the chart, 
because um, it is a weekly newspaper. It is far more influential than the mentioned daily papers. They also own um, uh, Wirtschaftswoche. So there are special interest publications that have a smaller readership than Tagesspiegel and Zeit. Zeit is by far the largest publication. Um, and that is most relevant in terms of the market value of the logos. Uh, they lend credibility to what is more important to the different clientele they also want to approach and that's your wider um, public that is already um, um, interested in, in what's going on uh, around them but who are already ideologically um, predefined, let's say, who are already in to some set of ideas who are with a group. And uh, these people um, find websites with the same names as the publication and they, they have more trust in these uh, websites that have um, given their credit by these printed publications. Uh, because the printed publications still do exist and are visible. And this is uh, what I'm going to speak in detail about in a, in a second. Dieter von Holzbrink is owning all these um, publications that your average citizen can read and your business person or doctor and so on will read in his uh, scarce free time. His um, half-brother and half-sister Monika Schöller and Stefan von Holzbrink uh, run the company Georg von Holzbrink um, Group. And uh, I don't know who the Georg uh, von Holzbrink is, probably their father, I'm not sure, but I don't even care. Um, and uh, they own Zeit, yes, but also a number of uh, book publishers. Um, people are not aware that uh, the same people who control your reading uh, material when it comes to your daily news also control your bookstores. And in this case, this is uh, the, the book publishers Rowold, Fischer and Kiepenheuer and Witch. So as I've already mentioned, there is this weekly newspaper that is not on this chart but is most significant when it comes to ideology. They have the CNN position and they are the front runner when it comes to influencing other newsrooms and that is tight. So I want to go with you into the sales and subs, how they are developing and um, as you see, they have a very stable, um, um, a very stable clientele and that is because those people who read these publications are already ideologically pure. They are these people who are searching out websites, Zeit.de, or they are uh, people who have uh, a, a subscription of Zeit to show off to their friends because it used to be seen as an elite newspaper um, um, but won't ever read it quite frankly. So they, uh, these are these um, uh, people and you see the subs are about uh, half of the people who supposedly read it. <laughs> um, and uh, only very few people actually buy it on purpose um, or for other reasons than to show off to say, well, I'm a subscriber to the site. This is uh, data from um, this uh, first mentioned uh, institute for um, the assessment of the proliferation of um, advertisement carriers. Um, I've directly um, downloaded the, the data from them and created this chart with it. So the first line is um, the, uh, the, 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 the uppermost uh, curve is uh, the distribution. And uh, I did not quite know how that number differs from the total sales. Um, looking hard at the, ta at the table, I have decided that probably um, the difference of three copies that I just um, um, dished out for, uh, for merchandising purposes. Uh, so in yellow you see the three copies and uh, about uh, more than half of uh, the, the buyers are subscribers. That's the green line in between. It is a uh, the spoiled Pratt's publication 
um, you want to show off to your friends that you're a subscriber to Zeit. And that is also why you don't see uh, a decline in their numbers. Uh, they are not read, they are bought. Uh, so the subscribers are not terribly relevant for them strategically. Um, when it comes to relevance, they have uh, the uh, extra data for uh, for the flight, uh, the the airline copies, uh, which I've mentioned earlier. Um, that is the the uh, lowest line. Um, uh, that's a light blue um, curve. But I want to go into detail with the retail sales. They are the the ones that decide whether your publication has cultural impact. Obviously not with those that actually buy them, but you need to be present to be seen by these managers who read in the plane and so on as a relevant news source. And I want to go with you in more detail about uh, the retails uh, because they uh, have an interesting uh, pattern that you should be aware of. I've spoken about the free copies already and uh, some interesting pattern emerges when you look into the breakdown of um, the retail sales. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, the first line or the uppermost line is um, the total delivered papers and notice that they are substantially above the other two uh, lines and that is the actually sold line and the line uh, of the sent back copies. Uh, so about half of the copies are always sent back. And if that were any different, and if that were any other product, normally these um, uh, these lines would would uh, co converge at some point. Uh, you would see an adjustment in the delivery so that um, fewer unnecessary copies are produced uh, more to the actual demand. If that were a product like any other, but they have to be present on the shelves, and they probably have to pay money to be present on the shelves in the supermarket as shelf space um, um, fees. So they 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 are uh, uh, printing more copies, and there was a spike in February 2016. I have no idea what was exactly in that month, what was relevant to the site in that month, but they decided to send far, far more uh, copies in that particular month to uh, all newsstands across the country. And all of them, all these excess copies were sent back. So let's talk about the print magazines. Um, the most famous uh, term publication is uh, Spiegel. Uh, they also are the uh, one of the most widely read internet websites uh, in Germany that are um, presenting news to us. And you all remember their love affair with uh, Donald Trump. They have a lot of covers that show him as a pure monster. They are, are still somewhat uh, in stable numbers, um, even though they are declining like, like everybody else. But um, uh, unlike conservative uh, publications or more conservative publications, they're not losing really uh, their main base. Uh, actually, it was even rising until fairly recently um, and it's just um, uh, declining in the subscription as you see in the, uh, in the graph on your on the right. Um, on, the, on the left you see the, um, the copies that are just uh, given to the wider public. Uh, of course these numbers are in decline as the wider public of course gets pissed off by the mainstream media. Uh, but the hardcore subscribers, uh, they are in it. Um, they are providing stable, uh, a stable income stream and uh, there, there is nothing uh, to change soon. Uh, it is actually owned by its staff. They have a couple of style um, um, self-carrying, a uh, self-ownership um, idea, um, or at least a half of the shares are managed by the staff. It is um, partially owned by uh, 
by uh, Krone and Ja, which belongs to Bertelsmann, it's a, a Bertelsmann aff affiliate, um, and uh, some other smaller uh, shareholders. So um, that is uh, that's the the interesting part, right? The, you have the stuff that is uh, indoctrinated anyway. The newsroom is uh, as left wing as it gets. Um, communists uh, uh, batshit crazy, and um, then they have. Uh, a, a major shareholding um, from Battlesman. Um, and I have not mentioned that when I talked about uh, the Social Democrats and their holdings of Matzak. Um, but you can exercise a lot of influence when you don't hold a majority. The Social Democrats don't hold a majority of Matzak. But um, if your everyday business decisions or your annual business decisions rely on a certain chunk of shareholders, you don't ups upset them. Then um, you don't want to upset them about your general direction, your political views and stuff. So if uh, the Social Democrats hold uh, Matzak, they don't hold a majority, but if they hold a chunk of Matzak, you can be sure that the others um, preemptively don't uh, bother to upset them in the first place. And the same is of course true with uh, Spiegel and Bertelsmann. Spiegel are these batshit crazy left-wing people who are, yeah, who we're into communism again and again. And then you have uh, this uh, Bertelsmann elite group uh, that is uh, holding um, that is uh, holding a, a, a slither big enough to make sure that they are not going, uh, we should uh, go to war with America. Uh, that They don't openly or aggressively turn against uh, the West as such. Um, and they ha give the whole publication still a civilian look, right? So th those batshit crazy um, stuffers are careful not to present an uncivil uh, magazine, even though they would probably uh, like to go into more communist, more batshit crazy stuff. And Zeit that is owned by billionaires is is far more into it because they um, they don't have to care about presenting themselves to a more civilized public, right? A uh, battlesman is uh, relying on shareholders. They are, are a major, one of the major public houses, uh, publishing houses in the world, if not the biggest, I'm not quite sure. Um, they own the entire random book, uh, Ping Penguin random uh, book publishing uh, corporation. Everything that's affiliated with random and penguin is owned by Bertelsmann. They also own RTL. Uh, that's uh, a, a channel, TV channel family that's all over Europe, um, originated in Luxembourg, uh, but is now controlled by Germans. They they own um, a hell lot of TV channels, and they are reliant on a civil appearance, even though ideologically they go into Marxism. And uh, their main competitor, Stan. Uh, was founded by Henry Nunn and Henry Nunn and he used to be uh, an SS man um, and um, rumors have it that uh, Stan is either be named after his division in the uh, in the um, troop um, um, called the Nordstern North Star um, other rumors have it that his publication is named after uh, a similarly titled publication called Der Stern. So that's the same uh, word with an article. Uh, that was the, the tabloid of the National Socialists at the time. Either way, he uh, was a Nazi. <laughs> but after the war, the publication kind of um, weird into standard conservative views. Uh, now they are owned by Krone and Ja. Um, they also run together with Zeit, um, the Henry Nannen Schule, the Henry Nannen School. And that is a very 
prestigious in these circles, prestigious journalism school, uh, people who prance around as if they came from Harvard, uh, but have hardly any education at all. Um, this school is run partially half by Zeit and half by uh, Battlesman uh, Stan, uh, Krone and Ja, by these people. Um, and they receive regular donations by Spiegel. So that's that's basically one soup. Um, and this this school is like the Red Monastery in the uh, East German uh, dictatorship, um, the breeding center of hardcore ideologues in, in Germany. And they really believe that they are the elite and that they are intellectual. And they are very proud of their graduation from this Henry Nunnen Schule. The third uh, line is uh, a smaller publication and also the youngest, uh, Focus. Focus uh, came in when Stern uh, was too left wing at some point. Uh, they came in as a conservative alternative. That has changed. Uh, uh, they belong to Burda. Um, Burda is mostly into fluff. Um, there is the, the tabloid Bunte, um, that is um, pure gossip. Yeah, it's a gossip magazine. Then the German edition of Playboy uh, belongs to uh, Burda. And there's also a very interesting, strange magazine called Super Illo. And uh, that was founded in 1990 to serve the new East German market. And that is also kind of a tabloid for the most part um, that um, yeah deals with singers who were successful in uh, the communist regime and who are still somewhat around, actors, um, theaters, uh, whatever. Uh, tabloid stuff, regional affairs um, in a glossy magazine. Um, the publisher from the very beginning was a West German publisher. Uh, the editor, uh, the editorial board, the editors were half uh, West German and half East German. Uh, from the very beginning, they have a quota, um, and uh, it it is a very weird publication. I must say, I've just looked into it, um, and it's it's leaning communist still. <sighs> um, so you can imagine. Um, a hybrid between a women's magazine and a communist uh, magazine. How much I like that, right? And one of uh, uh, the frequent columnists is uh, Gregor Gysi. Gregor Gysi was the last uh, leader of the Communist Party SED that ran the, West, uh, the East German dictatorship uh, before its first renaming. He is responsible that the party was never dissolved. It um, uh, changed its name instead again and again. I have made a video about this, which you will find linked below. And he is a regular columnist of uh, Super Ilo. Uh, the Border Media uh, Company also awards um, a very strange prize called the Golden Hen. Um, that comes, that derives from a nickname of an actress, I believe. Uh, a woman who was nicknamed Hen uh, or Henna for whatever reason. And um, this prize uh, that's also co-sponsored co or co-organized, um, I don't even understand the relationship exactly, but that's also was taken care of or taken credit for by the public broadcasters RBB and MDR. I've mentioned already two uh, subdivisions of uh, ARD. Uh, that was the WDR for West Germany and the NDR for North uh, Germany. Um, there are other regional uh, divisions and MDR is for Middle Germany. Uh, RBB is for the region um, Berlin and the state that surrounds it, uh, Brandenburg.
And this award was given to Kaiga Gizi. Uh, now I want to go through some speculation with you real quick. Um, and that is, uh, I have noticed, I have not jotted um, um, down systematically uh, the changes that I have uh, seen over the years, but I have noticed a shift in the media. And um, it is not uncommon for Germans to find writers that were previously in openly communist papers like Tuts to reappear in supposedly conservative papers without any mea culpa, I made a mistake statement. And the text uh, is basically as it was before. I mean, the, the, the entire direction and the views have not changed. So they, they just go from communist papers to supposedly conservative papers without any um, objection from the, the editors. And uh, what I have seen is that quite a few have moved and also that uh, some conservatives were gone. Uh, th that move only went in one direction. I have not seen any true conservative to end up at uh, Süddeutsche or at Tatz, right? Um, it, it just is that uh, formerly left-wing uh, people move to uh, supposedly a former uh, conservative um, editorial boards and then influence the overall publication. That's a one-way direction, one-way street. Just uh, uh, Wolfgang Krach uh, became chief editor in 2015. Uh, he, he, I mean, he, that was at Süddeutsche, so he uh, replace somebody who was already on the left. Um, when I discuss this, uh, these changes, um, they just mean they are either not ideologically significant or they move to the left. You will not see it change to the conservative side. Um, I mean, editorial boards change and I cannot have an overview over what's going on in every little newsroom over the country. Uh, so Wolfgang Krach moved in uh, at Süddeutsch in 2015. Uh, Tanit Koch took over from Kai Dickmann in uh, January 2016. Uh, Kai Dickmann was already accused of being way too left wing for that publication. And before he left, he penned uh, uh, an article that uh, said that listed as opposed prejudices against refugees. So um, he was already on the left. Uh, Tanit Koch moved it a, a bit more um, to that direction. She is staunchly anti-Brexit, anti-Trump. Uh, now she is working for Battlesman. Uh, she is controlling the entire political board for all the um, TV channels. As I said, this is also connected to all the um to the media that i have cut out for the sake of scope um she is uh, leading the tv channels of the rtl family all across uh, europe i would uh, think at least in the german speaking sphere but could be more um and also ntv that's a dedicated cable news channel also belonging to battlesman um so she she moved from springer from build to battlesman uh, same difference. In uh, 2014, uh, the team Petzold and Andreas Petzold and Thomas Oberkorn repla were replaced by Christian Krug and Philipp Jessen. Um, in between, there was a guy called Dominic Wischmann. All of them were left wing already. Um, as I said, Stan founded by a Nazi, was somewhat um, conservative in between, uh, was already left-wing when Focus started out. And um, th this change did not really move the, the goalpost, I would, I would think. Um, but some people say it has become worse, so I, I don't reach Stan, who does. This is changing its editors and she's on an annual basis. Um, it's ludicrous at this point. Um, the publication is um, is irrelevant. Um, the, the online um, space is the least censored um, message board so far. I mean, the comment section is not uh, tightly controlled. 
not as much controlled as the comment sections of all other newspapers in Germany so far. I to talk about a small publication in more detail to uh, illustrate what I think happened on a large scale across the country, even though to a lesser extreme than this extreme case. And that is the case of Wirtschaftswoche, which was taken over by Miriam Meckel in 2014. That is a very significant change in our culture because this small business um, economics magazine that appeared in, on a weekly basis was run by Roland Tischi, the man who uh, created this craft that started that inspired uh, this video. Um, he is also um, he, he used to be the chief editor of uh, Wirtschaftswoche, um, and he left. He left in uh, 2014, and not alone. He left with his partner um, Bettina Röhl. And if two major uh, figures, uh, prominent people, VIPs, leave at the same time. You can guess there is a huge conflict. And this makes this topic so difficult, this cold takeover, because you cannot look behind the doors in every newsroom all across the country. And who is Miriam Meckel? She used to work as a so-called state secretary in the state NRW, that's short for North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, and a state secretary, I mean, that's the English, the American English word, of, co of course, means something different. That's just somebody who has a ministerial role, but for whatever reason, we don't call it a minister. So she was a quasi, a, a, a quasi, a quasi a minister in the state of NRW. And what is quite um, f surprising is the focus of her ministry. She was the Ministry of Media uh, for Wolfgang Clement, uh, who was then the Prime Minister of the state, and uh, expanded that role still somewhat for media and then also for international affairs and Europe. So we, have a we had a ministry for media and international affairs and Europe. Um, I think these titles don't even mean something. They are just uh, positions with high salaries and do um, and little work. And even though she is not a member of the Social Democrats, she um, worked for, uh, for prime ministers, uh, Per Steinbrück and uh, Wolfgang Clement, who both are of the Social Democratic Party, and it's very unusual that uh, they even considered somebody without a party book uh, to run a ministry or pseudo ministry or whatever that was. Um, and uh, she, she never took on that party um, membership. However, it's clear that she is of that ideology, and her uh, civil she has made the civil union. I don't know how that how that is called the civil union partner. Uh, is Anne Will, one of the most prominent talk show hosts in uh, the realm of political talk shows in Germany. I think at the time uh, she was on at uh, Sunday nights, which is the most attractive time slot for political talk shows in Germany. Um, so uh, she's married to one woman in the public broadcaster's flagship talk show and used to work for social democratic uh, prime ministers and is taking over an economics managerial magazine. Um, that did not go down well. The numbers uh, of that magazine also declined. Um, but more interestingly is even who she replaced. Um, Benit, um, maybe I start with uh, Roland Tischi, the one who inspired this video. He founded a news blog, uh, Tischi's Einblick, uh, which was also then hosting uh, Bettina Röhl, who left with him. Uh, she wrote a regular column. Uh, she's now into books because she is um, a historian um, and a historical figure herself. Uh, and that's why I want to talk about her in more detail. Um, she is the daughter of Ulrike Meinhof, 
um, Ulrike Meinhof was a terrorist and a murderer uh, who uh, fought for the terror group the Red Army Faction, uh, RAF. Uh, that's not to be confused with the Royal uh, Air Force. And um, in 1970, um, Ulrike Meinhof had her own daughter kidnapped by the terror group and deducted to um, Sicily. So she did not take that lightly and went on a publishing spree um, about uh, the Red Army faction, communism, uh, socialism, um, all of these things. She ended up bringing um, evidence against our then Foreign Minister Joschka Fischer to the public. And that was a number of photos and a video that showed the former uh, foreign minister to have been into brawls with the police. Um, of course, the entire media uh, de uh, de denounced her. Uh, uh, they leveled uh, copyright claims against her, did some psycho shrink talk um, to discredit her. All of this uh, an entire campaign was started because she dared to talk about the violent past of Joschka Fischer. And when she did not um, cave in, uh, she sent a letter to the president uh, to uh, announce that she is in indeed suing Mr. Fischer for his uh, violent acts in the past. And uh, in particular, she had in mind a case of a policeman who was burned uh, alive uh, with Monotov cocktails. Uh, he barely survived, uh, had a lot of his skin burned. I forgot the percentage, but it was, uh, it was a, a large uh, percentage of his uh, skin burned off. And that was Jürgen Weber. Jürgen Weber uh, screamed at the time uh, when he um, when, when he was in flames. Shoot me, please shoot me to his colleagues. They did not do him the favor. He survived. I think he is dead now. Um, survive is always relative. Uh, if your body has done has been done such damage, um, the, the the pain and the medication against it and so on it all wears you down over. The following years. So um, she indicted uh, Joschka Fischer for attempted murder um, and uh, she is basing that on a number of witness accounts. Uh, she had spoken to people um, and um, the, the point really was that even though she had no direct evidence that Mr. Fischer himself threw one of these Molotov cocktails at this policeman, um, friends of his did, people he knew did, and witness account um, showed, uh, or witness account stated that um, he encouraged people to use Molotov cocktails. That was um, that was the claim, at least at the time. I don't. You know, I don't want to be legally liable one way or another uh, for this, but this was what was stated at the time. And there were witness accounts that showed Mr. Fisher um, was encouraging the use of Molotov cocktails and that they then were used um, against this police uh, man. Uh, that was at uh, the demonstration following the suicide of Bettina Röhl's mother. Independent of that particular story, uh, there was also a gun that was found in the car of Joschka Fischer a, a number of years ago, and that uh, was the gun that killed Heinz Herbert Kari, uh, sorry, Heinz Herbert Kari, uh, the Hessian Minister of Economics. Hess, uh, Hesse is a state in, in Germany, and uh, the Minister of Economics was shot with a gun that later was found in the car of the later, later again, uh, um, foreign minister Joschka Fischer. To wrap it all up, um, there were enormous changes, and this uh, this story of uh, Bettina Röhl and um, um, being replaced or being pushed out by people like Miriam Meckel uh, illustrates this. I, I assume. I mean, I cannot look into every newsroom, obviously. 
and these things are usually kept quiet. So um, there, there was something going on between the years 2014 and 2016. Some of it resulted in uh, prominent people writing blogs like uh, Roland Tischi, but there are others as well. Uh, they are often aggregated by uh, Henry Broder in his aggregate blog Ach Gut. Um, and uh, this prepared the, the takeover uh, of the radical left that is allowing all this mass immigration and, and that facilitated the takeover of the left that is um, allowing this mass immigration and um, kicking up this Nazi scare and everybody who doesn't agree is a Russian or a Nazi or both. And uh, this is why I had to make such a long video to explain it all. Uh, as I mentioned, I just covered um, the press, the print media aspect of it. I, I think there is probably a, a hidden story when it comes to um, the public broadcasters, the TV, the TV channels, um, the internet publications and a number of other bus uh, business deals and um, organizations that were also streamlined in these very years 2014 to 2016 and who are all in uh, one swamp with one another. Thank you for listening.